Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the multi-step income statement. Now, before we dive into the details of the multi-step income statement, it's worth taking a moment to simply reflect upon the single step income statement, which is arguably the simpler and easier of the two different types of income statement. In a single step income statement, as you see here for an example, you typically have a section for your revenues where you list all the revenues of the company. You have a section for your expenses where you list all the expenses of the company, and then you net those two together to come up with net income. Single step, just here's revenue, here's expense, here's net income, and you're done. But when we think about the different types of companies out there, we know that we could provide more information in the income statement than simply here are my revenues, here is my expenses, and therefore you can subtract the two. For instance, with merchandisers, instead of simply saying here were revenues, here were expenses, we can say here was the revenue from our sales, here were some reductions in that revenue, therefore here were the net sales. Already we're more informative than simply saying here's revenue. We can also say well, here were the net sales we made, and here's the cost of all those goods we sold, and therefore here's the gross profit just from those goods. Again, more informative. From there, we can take out operating expenses, come up with net income, right? So that's one way we could just make our income statement richer, take into account something like a merchandising company, which could provide more granular level of detail to investors. However, we can go even further than that. We could consider the fact that maybe what investors care about, just like they care for merchandisers about how is the profitability of a product, maybe in all companies, what investors may care about is how is the profitability of just your core operations, whatever they happen to be? And can we separate that from, say, non-operations? Can you show us what the uh, results of your business were before taxes? And then you could show us after taxes, right? And so we're going to expand this even further. Notice the top here, I have the same. Taking into consideration a merchandising company. Start off with your sales revenue, take out your reductions, gives you net sales, take out COGS, gives you gross profit. Take out your operating expenses only, not other expenses, and that gives you something called income from operations. This kind of puts a dividing line right here. Everything above this line is the company's core operations. Anything below this line is not. So what is not core operations? Well. You can do plus or minus your non-operating revenues and expenses. What might go into this bucket? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a handful of things, which includes interest, unless you're a bank and that's part of your main line of business. If you're any other company and you are either earning interest or you are incurring the cost of interest because you borrowed money, Either way, interest is not typically your main line of business. Interest is just something extra that happens. And so in your non-operating section, you're going to put anything related to interest. Gains and losses. Now, what are gains and losses and how do they differ from revenues and expenses? Well, gains and losses are essentially revenues and expenses, but they're not generated from your core business. They're generated from something else you did. For example, Apple is in the business of selling iPhones. Any money it makes from selling an iPhone is a revenue. Apple is not in the business of selling off old equipment it no longer needs. So in the event that it sells a piece of old equipment it no longer needs and it profits from that sale, they would record that as a gain, not a revenue. And it would go in this other section, this non-operating section, because that's not the core business. And of course, if you lose money on a similar transaction, that's a, that's a loss. And the other thing that is in here would be dividend revenue. In the event that you hold stock in another company and that stock pays dividends, that revenue, unless you are an investment firm by trade, you know, if you are any other type of company, that revenue from those dividends, that's not your core business. That's just extra money you made, similar to interest. That goes in the other section. So once you have your income from operations and then you adjust it for the non-operating pieces of your business, 
you have what's known as income before taxes. Why before taxes? Well, because you haven't factored in the tax impact yet. Then you list your taxes. And finally, that brings you down to net income. This is a much richer flow of information than simply saying, here's revenue, here's expense, here's net income. It gives investor more decision useful information. Here's an example of a multi-step income statement. Notice in this example, we have revenue up top, and specifically it shows product revenue and service revenue. So this company has two different types of revenue. This is Microsoft's 2019 10K, by the way. Notice that they then take out the cost of revenue. This is also another way of referring to cost of goods sold. And that is going to give them their gross margin. Now, from there, they take out all of their other operating items. That leads to operating income. Then notice they have an other section, which then leads to income before taxes. Then they take out the income taxes, which ultimately leads to net income. This is a good example of a multi-step income statement, much more informative in the way it's laid out. All right, that's it for your introduction to the multi-step income statement. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you join me for another video.